alaikum, everyone. Uh, as humans, uh, we are influenced every day by our surroundings. The weather, the time of year, where we live, the food we eat, the jobs we work, the sights we see, the family members we interact with, and the friends we cherish. Each of these play a significant role on our daily and hourly mood, state of being, and choices we make. However, this influence is a two-way street. Just as we can be shaped by society, we should also work towards shaping it. The words we utter, the number of smiles we give, the opinions we hold, and the grudges we maintain, the people we all touch, impact those around us directly and indirectly. As a submitter, the role of influence in our lives is like that of an insect under a magnifying glass. Our peers, co-workers, and friends single us out as quote-unquote righteous individuals. And as such, they can scrutinize the whole religion by observing our actions. As submitters, the role of influence also is also analogous to that of clay and its mold. Like clay, we readily adopt the characteristics, qualities, and nuances of that which surround us. While initially these external influences can be relatively subtle, over time, they can become solidified in us, like that of clay that has become hardened in its mold. Back in the 1960s, an influential psychologist by the name of Albert Bandura conducted a series of studies monumental to the development of social psychology. His most famous experiment, known as the Bobo Doll Experiment, explained human behavior and thought in terms of continuous reciprocal interaction between human behavior cognitive uh, functions, and environmental influences. In simpler terms, Bandura wanted to prove how impressionable humankind can be, and how within today's world, individuals, individuals blatantly ignore the morality of their decisions to conform to societal beliefs and values. His experiment involved showing children videos uh, with violent behavior, where adults would attack this inflatable doll known as the Bobo doll in distinctive manners, using a hammer in some cases, and throwing the doll in the air in others. Afterwards, the researchers provided subjects with the same doll. And unsurprisingly enough, the children would imitate their exact behavior, violently attacking the doll. Now, here's a clip. Um... And it's not from my computer. Okay. The uh, model Pablo doll with the mallet. Flung it in the air. Kicked it repeatedly. Threw it down and beat it. It was once widely believed that seeing others vent aggression would drain the viewer's aggressive drive. As you can see, exposure to aggressive modeling is hardly cathartic. Exposure to aggressive modeling increased attraction to guns even though it was never modeled. Guns had less appeal to children who had no exposure to the aggressive modeling. The children also picked up the novel hostile language. Now, although this experiment was comprised solely of children, it also applies to adults on an undeniable level. As an adolescent living within this generation, I've seen the negative implications social pressure can have. Actions such as drinking, 
having premarital sex, doing drugs are all normalized activities within our society solely because the majority deems it as acceptable. And as humans, we are conditioned to accept these impressions. Right is right even if no one is doing it. Wrong is wrong even if everyone is doing it. In Surah 5, verse 7, it states, O people of the scripture, do not transgress the limits of your religion beyond the truth, and do not follow the opinions of people who have gone astray and have misled multitudes of people they are astray from the right path. Although it's crucial we surround ourselves with righteous believers, I also want to deliver this speech from a first-person standpoint and how we as submitters can be agents of influence rather than being followers. In public, individuals like us must be recognized as submitters and as upstanding members in society through our actions and through our utterances. In Surah 39, verse 11 through 13, it states, I have been commanded to worship God, devoting the religion absolutely to him alone, and I was commanded to be the utmost submitter. I fear if I disobeyed my Lord, the retribution of a great day. God is the only one I worship, devoting my religion to absolutely him alone. Wooing people into submission does not solely entail giving reminders. And while it's crucial we advise others on their shortcomings, setting an exceptional example for both submitters and non-submitters can serve as a constant and deliberate reminder to conduct their lives in accordance with God's teachings. Setting an example includes being charitable, through time, forgiveness, giving zakat, treating others in the best possible manner, and so on. In Surah 24, verse 22, it says, Those among you who are blessed with resources and wealth shall be charitable towards their relatives, the poor, and those who have immigrated for the sake of God. They shall treat them with kindness and tolerance. Do you not love to attain God's forgiveness? God is forgiver most merciful. While being charitable is a crucial attribute to obtain as a submitter, it doesn't distinguish a believing soul from the rest. Being a representative of God's message means leading life in absolute devotion to him alone and never compromising submission for anything within this worthy life. Doing namaz in public even if others are watching, saying inshallah and mashallah, saying bismillah before eating, fasting during Ramadan, dressing up modestly, not partaking in gossip, dropping all business for Friday prayer, and numerous other commandments help us as submitters to be distinguished amongst others, exposing our true priorities within this life. As we all know, proportionally, there are very few submitters in this world. This means that for many people whom we, we interact with, their only insight into submission and what it means to be a submitter is ascertained by watching what we do and what we utter. Thus, for the majority of people, we are the sole representatives of submission in their lives. We are their N of one. If I drink al alcohol, others will conflate that with submission. If I'm constantly cursing, then others will assume Islam has no stance on bad language. If I preach what I don't do, what does it say about me as a representative of God's message? Surah 2, verse 66 states, We set it up as an example for their generation, as well as subsequent generations, and enlightenment for the righteous. There are 1.8 billion traditional Muslims across the world who are breaking laws, not following God's laws, and preaching wrong teachings to others. As a minority, we have an immense responsibility to not only prove we are disassociated with them, but also representative of God's truth. When God states, lead a righteous life, he's not referring to solely those times when we were surrounded by believers. Our goal should be to be exemplary in our righteousness, outside of the comfort of being among submitters, meaning at work, on vacation, at school, at family gatherings, and in friend circles. Surah 6, verse 61 says, He is the one who puts you to death during the night and knows even the smallest of your actions during the day. He resurrects you every morning until your lifespan is fulfilled. Then to him is your ultimate return. He will then inform you of everything you had done. It's simple to just preach beliefs and ideas to someone. However, putting these convictions into action is another ballpark. I can claim I'm a submitter, a righteous person, a believer in God alone but only through my actions and how I handle situations in life determines this claim. In Surah 61, verse 2 and 3, it states, O you who believe, why do you say what you do not do? Most abominable in the sight of God is saying what you do not do. 
I spent years aiming to persuade myself that I'm one amongst my peers, that I'm a typical adolescent, and, and that I'm no different from my surroundings. Yet, I am different. Each one of us is different. We are chosen by the most gracious to do righteous works, to grow our souls and be representatives of his message, which is a remarkable blessing and honor to have. Every little action we take, every word we utter, we must execute in accordance with God's commandments. If we compromise our beliefs, if we curse or use bad language, if we backbite about others, if we say a white lie, if we break a promise, if we treat one another poorly, if we have fear instilled in our hearts, if we act jealous towards others, then we are setting a bad example for those around us. The choice is ours, and our roadmap is the Quran. By making pleasing God our only daily priority, our good influence will naturally follow. Let us pray wholeheartedly that God helps us make the right choices, that please him so that we can be amongst the elite of the elite, and join him once again in paradise. So we're going with two or three questions right now. Um, let's see. I'm going to scan the room real quick. Who has questions? Assalamu alaikum. MashaAllah. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, Sheba, great presentation. I think that you frame very well um, the importance of being a representative of God. And uh, I'm just asking you, It's been really a while I did not give my voting card to anyone because I do not trust really any of the people who are presenting themselves as the President of the United States of America. And as I submitted and got talk about the fact that at the end, our religion is going to prevail. To me, my thinking is that maybe it is going to be a president who is a submitter, who is a believer, who is going to be president here in the United States and almost everywhere throughout the world. What role do you have to play, in fact, in that? What role do we have to play in that? I can tell you one thing, God willing. The idea that you presented here today, if you were to be presenting yourself as a president, I will start voting again and give you my card. So thank, you. thank you. Um, yeah, God mentions one day submission will prevail, and we have to all do our part, um, do the commandments, and do as best as we can to strive in the cause of God. And eventually, the good influence will follow. Other people will watch us. Other people will see and. Um, they'll want to ask us. They'll be like, how do you have such a good life? How do you have such good morals? And um, that's eventually how submission will spread. And we don't necessarily have to preach. While it's important, um, just being the best submitter possible is a great way to spread the message. Mashallah.